All right, joining us now from Gonzaga, head coach Lisa Fortier, along with student athletes Kaylin Trong and Yvonne Ejim. Coach, congratulations on a great season. We'll start with your opening statement, then we'll uh, open it for questions to the student athletes. Yeah. Um, is this working? Mic up. Yeah? Oh, there, we go. there you go. Um, yeah, these guys, you know, today wasn't our best day. It wasn't an indicator of the season that we had. Um, coaching this team has been one of the most fun things I've done. Uh, in my life, actually, uh, especially the last couple of weeks. Uh, they've just been uh, such a joy. Uh, you know, Lenny, I've had for five years, and Vani for four, and, you know, varying other times on this team. And they are people who make people want to watch women's basketball. And uh, they're people who support each other and cheer for each other and life, not just on the court. And um, they're some of the best people that I know. And uh, I wish that we could have come up with a, a better game plan or executed it a little bit better or just made a few more shots today. Um, but really, I wouldn't trade that for any of those people in there and being able to be their coach. So it's a great honor to have coached these guys and everyone back in the locker room. And I'm just really grateful that we were able to do that. So. <coughs> Take questions now for the student athletes. Start right there. Uh, Matt Armidas from the Daily Texan. For either player, um, from a player's perspective, what makes playing against Texas so difficult? They've had a lot of teams this season to under their season average. Um, just uh, is it dynamic guard play, play from the bigs, the size they can bring off the bench? Just uh, from a player's perspective, please. Um, I think if anything, um, we just weren't running what we needed to. I think if anything, we took ourselves a lot out of the battle and out of our flow and out of our game. Um, just like making sure that not only are we setting the tone from the beginning, that, but that we're keeping that consistent. I think that was really what was um, kind of not in our favor today. Um, and when that happens, I feel like we don't have a lot of flow as well. So mostly on our part, just like, you know, taking ourselves out of um, the advantages that we could have had. Uh, Kaylin, was that the best? Name and affiliation, please. Oh, I'm sorry. Greg Lee with the Spokesman Review. Was that the best defense that you've seen played against you guys? Because they were pushing your offense practically to half court most of the time. Um, I mean, it's, it's Texas ball. It's physical. Uh, most aggressive? I don't know. There's a lot of teams that we played this year that um, have thrown – many defenses at, a defense um, at us. So, I mean, again, like Bonnie said, back to what Juan said, we took ourselves out of it. And if, you know, our, sh our shooting a little bit, we kind of rely on that. And it just didn't go our way today. Ella Munson with the next. Um, Kaylin, I know this is, you know, your last game, and this isn't the result you wanted. But you did, you know, it was your first Sweet 16 with this program. Can you sort of reflect on the tournament run that you guys had this season? Yeah, I mean, this is one season that I, I won't forget. Uh, we started as a team that was, I wouldn't say broken, but disconnected a little bit in the beginning of the year. And uh, we worked our way um, through adversity. And I think this is the most connected team I've ever been on. And I just love, like, how we play for each other how we care for each other on and off the court. And, um, you know, I wouldn't trade it for anything. And just to make Sweet 16 since 2015 for Gonzaga, it's uh, very special for me. You just mentioned the first Sweet 16 since 2015. Uh, uh, 
Yvonne, maybe you can elaborate on that. What does that mean to you, and what does that mean for this Gonzaga program? Yeah, I think if anything, um, it just shows how much we're growing, um, how much better we're getting each year, and kind of just like where this program uh, lies in the future um, and what we can really do with it. Um, this team was super special. I think they did, we did a lot this year, um, and I think that's just a standard that we want to keep ourselves at um, continuously, not only this year, but for the years to come as well. So I think it shows a little bit of um, what we're capable of, where we want to go, um, and kind of like the path that like we can really do it as well. Any other questions for our student athletes? Mm -mm. No. Great. Good job. All right. Thank you very much. Congratulations on a great season. All right. We're going to open up the questions to Coach Fortier. Start with uh, Tim, then we'll go to Lindsay. Tim Booth from the AP. Lisa, what did Texas do so well defensively? Well, they pressure. They're really physical. Um, I think they, you know, they took us out of position. And it was, you know, sometimes they they tried to blow up the handoffs. They tried to blow up the ball screens. Um, and then we, did, we didn't do a great job on the offensive glass at all. I mean, we've had multiple games in the 20s on the offensive glass. And that's usually when we haven't missed that many shots. Um, but we missed a bunch of them today. So I think that's part of defense, is defensive rebounding. I think it's one of the parts that gets mistaken. But you know, our turnovers weren't great. But um, I think that it was, it was more about just how physical they were on coming off some of those ball screens. We've had such great success with that. We, we end up with Lee and Bonnie on the bench for long stretches, which doesn't help by any, by any means. And I, I don't think one of those was maybe an offensive foul. The other ones were defensive. But their, their pressure was a lot. Lindsay. Lindsay Schnell, USA Today. At least guard play is so important in the NCAA tournament. And you guys did a good job on Booker. And she's sitting on the bench with two fouls. And then here comes Shaylee Gonzalez, who you're obviously familiar with. What did she do tonight that really set them apart, do you think? Yeah, I mean, Shaylee's a really good player who we've played a lot against. And um, I think she just did kind of Shaylee things. The, the reason why she was a good player at BYU, and I haven't followed her as much, but she, why she still is, is because she does a little bit of everything. You know, she can shoot it, she can drive it, she's heady, she guards. You know, there's not a lot of holes in her game. And, um, you know, with Booker out, I, I don't know exactly why Vic has chosen to put Booker at the one and Shaylee at the, at the off guard. I don't know if it's just to stretch the defense in different ways and post her up some, but she could clearly, I mean, she was a starting point guard um, and so at BYU and, and she's clearly capable of it. So I, I think that today she, she played really well, and she picked up the slack. She's a very, very experienced veteran um, and just a well-rounded player. Uh, looking back a year ago. Name and affiliation. Game, oh, Jim Allen, spokesman review. Um, a year ago, uh, you played a similar game against Ole Miss. Does, it, does this game feel like that one offensively? Um, maybe. I, I mean, I would say no. Uh, not really. I know that there there was pressure. I think that they got to some switching things. It was some of that. I, I think that in the old Miss game, we were we were shell shocked a little bit, and I don't think we were shell shocked today. I think we we just didn't put together enough good quarters. Our we we can play like we played in the third offensively, and we did it all year. I mean, we haven't we didn't have two single digit. We we barely had any one game that had we had one quarter that was in single digits. Um, so I think that. Against Ole Miss, it was a little bit different. I don't think we were expecting necessarily the amount of pressure that they put on us, even though we'd seen it on film. Um, th this time felt like we weren't getting the stops. So offensively, it was, it was hard, but, but really we didn't get stops either. And that, that is something that was more frustrating at different points than the offense, to be honest with you, is because in all the games where we've come back, we haven't had that many of them, but where there was a quarter or two where we weren't great, we were able to stop some people and then create some offense off of our defense, not from steals, but just from getting stops and pushing in transition. And so that was the bigger concern. I know we've talked a lot about our offense, and we don't get me wrong, we haven't scored in the 40s all year either, but that, that could have helped our offense, I think, and it didn't today. Go to Alexa and then Greg. 
Alexa Filthy with ESPN. Uh, two, if you don't mind. First, uh, obviously with Eliza going down at the end of the game, is there anything you could share about what happened to her or her status? Yeah, she hurt her ankle, um, and uh, she's had some x-rays, and it's not broken. So that's that's what we know right now, that there's some doctors here who have some special um, specialty in that area, and she's going to be okay right now. She's in a boot, and it's a bummer of a way to finish a bummer of a game. Um, and if I could also have a follow-up um, with Yvonne coming back next year and being that you know centerpiece to continue on what you guys were able to achieve this season, uh, what do you hope to see from her as she embraces that role and um, can hopefully build upon what you guys were able to do this year? Yeah, I mean, just, you know, Yvonne has been, she's such a great story. And I think that she's still building that story and it's gonna last long beyond her times at Gonzaga. And uh, she, you know, she comes from a big basketball family, and you know she she picked Gonzaga, which was probably a great spot for her. She turned down you know big schools and big conferences to come and do what she's done at Gonzaga, and then she didn't play that much, and and now she's a superstar. And um, I think she's going to spend time this off season. Hopefully, she's going to be playing with the Olympic team um, in Paris, and she's going to spend time in this off season continuing to expand her game. She's been able to do that unlike any player I've ever seen each year. She's taken her game to another level. And I know that she wants to work on her perimeter shooting. You know, she's become really good from the mid-range. I know she wants to extend out even further for her professional career. And, um, you know, she's she's been a leader on our team since the minute she stepped on campus. Um, she's just, she's that kind of person. And so I, I know she's going to continue to grow in those ways. But, you know, she's, she's going to take a next step and she's going to take a next step in probably a lot of ways because that's what she does. And, um, you know, she's been, I would say she's going to put us on her back, but she's kind of been doing that for the last two years between, you know, a little bit more Lenny last year, but the, between last year and this year. And um, I'm just looking forward to seeing the player that she is when we step out on the floor again next October, November. Greg. Yeah, Greg Lee with the Spokesman Review. Lisa, could you talk about the third quarter and that little surge you had? You got it within 12. and. Uh, kind of had them on their heels a little bit too. Yeah, we did. I mean, it ends up being 17-17, and after that quarter was over, I asked Jordan, you know, what was that quarter? He said, tied. Dang. We are hoping we would make up a couple there. Um, and we did for a while, and then they, they scored a couple consecutive baskets. We were trading with them for a little bit. I think we, we started off getting some stops, and that led us, and then we got s stopped, and they scored, and stopped, and they scored. And so, but I, I liked, we were just playing our pace. We got to some transition. We got to some. We made some threes at that time. I don't know how many. Not that many because there wasn't many that whole day. But we got to the rim, and just I think we were stretching them and getting them out of position a little bit, which is not easy to do with their team. Um, but that was that was fun, right? A lot more fun than the rest of it. <laughs> Any other questions? Uh, Bella Munson with the next. Just, I, I know it's the Trong sisters, it's their last season, um, and they've done a lot for this program. Can you just speak to what they mean to this program and to you personally? Huh, yeah, so there's a lot of tears in the locker room just looking at uh, those two. And, um, you know, I, I think after their freshman year, uh, we, I don't know if it's their freshman year, sophomore year, we, lo we lost to Belmont. We were a five and we lost in the COVID year in the bubble. And, you know, there was a lot of questions, pe people questioning if they made a right choice and how they played. And um, they're just such loyal, uh, committed, faith-filled, good-hearted people who, um, you know, they make, they've made my life better. You know I mean? Not, not on the court. I mean, definitely they made it better on the court. Um, but off the court, just by the, the people that they are. And I think when there's two of them, you know, it's very unique. We've had twins before. And so uh, when there's two of them and when they have an impact early in their career, it just feels like they've been there forever. And we recruited them for a long time. So, I mean, for me, my head coaching career has been three years recruiting the Trongs and five years coaching them. And then there was two years before that that nobody remembers because the Trongs were there the whole time. And then it's multiplied by two. So, um, you know, I'm so grateful for their commitment to our program. I'm so grateful for the things that they've taught me as just as a person. And, uh, you know, I, I love those guys deeply in my heart. And, and they love us. And they love Gonzaga. And I'm just part of the, the all the laughing and the giggling and all the jokes that we have here is that, like,
Better allergy relief for better boyfriending. Live Claritin Clear. Coach, the best that you can hope for is that when it's all done and we get past the tears, that they don't have any regrets about that. You know, we definitely don't about them and they don't either. So I think that that's the best part of coaching. And Brenna, we'll have our last question. Brenna Green, Coin6. I apologize if you've answered something like this since I got here midway through. It's okay. But um, you mentioned the Belmont loss. It has been a long time since your program has gotten to the second weekend, and there's been so many obstacles and reasons as to why, some of which were completely out of your control. Just how does it feel to at least get back here and, and have this moment tonight, even if it didn't go the way that you wanted? Yeah, I mean, you know, we, we want to do more, but it's really fun. I, I was texting with Kate Pay, and I was texting with Mark Few, and we were talking as a staff about UConn and all these guys who make it look like it's really easy to get. These are our friends, you know, like make it look like it's really easy to get to the Sweet 16. It's not easy to do. And um, then we were also talking about Chris Peterson and when he was in the Rose Bowl with football and that he didn't enjoy it at all. You know, he'll tell you that it was a terrible week for him. And so, you know, we're not saying like we're, we're coming here to enjoy what we're doing. And we enjoyed playing basketball. We enjoyed hosting last week. And I think that that's what we need to just continue to remind ourselves is that it's, as much as we want to be the team that gets there all the time, we also definitely don't want to be the team that gets there and doesn't have fun doing it. And so the, you know, it's significant to our program. Of course, we want to chalk up as many of these as we can, mostly to those, for those players in there. But I think the, the best thing about being here was how much fun we had. Um, honestly, from the time we lost um, against Portland until now has been the most fun I've had all year. Uh, we were, it was more fun than beating Stanford and doing that. And the most fun I've had in a lot of years, just because we all, I think, tried to be present and enjoy it. And Lenny alluded to the fact that we're, we were a little bit disconnected. And our goal all season has been the most, to be the most connected team that we could be, the most connected team in the country. I think we achieved that. And, and so, like, there's no shame in not getting to the Elite Eight. I wish we did. I really wish we did. I wish we got to the Final Four. I wish we got to do all those things. But it's been an incredible, incredible time and I'm just grateful for it. Coach, we appreciate your time. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you, guys. That's it. We'll see you all tomorrow.